Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here is your latest integral of the day. We have a definite integral from 0 to the natural log of 4 of e to the t dt over the square root of e to the 2t plus 9. So if you want a little hint, I'll just tell you how I solved it. I first did a u sub and then a trig sub. Okay, so to start off, maybe it's helpful that you guys know, remember e to the 2t is the same as e to the t squared. So that's basically what motivated the u sub that I started off with. So I went ahead and let u equal e to the t, and then du would be e to the t dt, right? Good, now we also need to switch our limits of integration. So currently these limits belong to the variable in the integrand, which is t, but I need to switch them to be limits for u. So I'm gonna substitute them in for t. So u of zero would be e to the zero, that's one. And then u of natural log of four would be e to the natural log of four, that's four. So those are our new limits of integration. So now let's rewrite everything in terms of u. We'll have integral from one to four. e to the t dt, that's du. Beautiful. Over square root e to the 2t is e to the t squared, which is u squared plus 9. How are we doing? Good? Okay, so now looking at the denominator, it's time for trig sub. I have a variable quantity squared plus a constant. So in this case, we're going to use tangent. I'm going to let u equal 3 tangent theta. Perfect. Differentiate both sides again. du would be 3 secant squared theta d theta. And then again, I need to switch my limits of integration. These limits, 1 and 4, belong to the variable u. So I'm going to substitute them in for u and solve for theta. This is different than when we use sub. We don't substitute them in. I set it equal to that number. So 1 equals 3 tan theta for the lower limit, and then 4 equals 3 tan theta. Okay, so that means 1 third is tangent theta. That's a little awkward because this is not a value from our unit circle. No, it's not. So this first lower limit of integration is tan inverse of 1 third. And then similarly over here, again, 4 thirds is tan theta. 4 thirds is not a value that we know right off from our unit circle. So upper limit of integration is tan inverse of 4 thirds. Now, technically, you should just be writing out those new limits like that. So you would have tan inverse of 1 third and then tan inverse of 4 thirds, okay? It's just a little messy. You know what I mean? I totally understand. So if you want instead, what we can do, and just check with your instructor though before you do this, because I don't want anybody to lose points or get in trouble, okay? We can call this angle alpha, and then we can call this angle beta, if you like. That way it's just a little bit easier and cleaner when we write our limits of integration. And now I can say, oh, this is gonna go from alpha to beta. And then now, let's see. So we've got du in the numerator, that's 3 secant squared theta d theta over square root u squared plus 9. That would be 3 tan theta squared, so 9 tan squared theta plus 9. Okay? All right, just please, please, please double check with your instructor if they'll let you do something like this. Um, I don't want anyone getting in trouble. Okay. From here, let's clean up the integrand. I'm going to proceed because, I mean, it's so much easier just writing that out. So we've got 3 secant squared theta d theta over, and then this is square root, 9 times tangent squared theta plus 1. So tangent squared theta plus 1, that's just secant squared theta. And then I've got this 9 here. And all of that is underneath the radical. So when we take square root of 9 secant squared theta, technically that's 3 absolute value of secant theta. But remember, when we do trig sub, we restrict where theta is, so we don't have to worry about the absolute value bars. We can just drop them, and that's what's in our denominator. So then now we've got alpha to beta 3 secant squared theta d theta 
over 3 secant theta. Nice. The whole denominator cancels. The 3 is gone. And there's just one secant left now. So integral. Alpha to beta secant theta d theta. You remember antiderivative for secant theta? Oh, good. Yes. Natural log absolute value secant theta plus tan theta. And then this gets evaluated alpha to beta. So we're going to draw triangles now at the end to finish off the problem, but let's just get everything set up. So this is natural log absolute value secant beta plus tangent beta minus natural log absolute value secant alpha plus tangent alpha. And I just chose alpha and beta to represent angles because we do that commonly in trig. You could have done like theta with the subscript one, theta sub two as well. Okay, so now it's triangle time. So in order to draw our triangles, you've got to go back and remember that alpha was equal to tan inverse of one third and beta was equal to tan inverse of four thirds. Let me make sure that that's right. Yes, beautiful. So from here, this means tangent of alpha is one third, tangent of beta is four thirds, and I'm gonna draw two triangles that represent the following, or what's up above. So here's alpha. If tangent of alpha is one third, that means ratio of opposite over adjacent is one over three. And so this would be, very good, square root of 10. And then over here, tangent of beta is 4 thirds. So here's beta opposite over adjacent. And then this missing side is 5. We love a good 3, 4, 5 triangle, don't we? Nothing could be better. Okay. So here we go. We have natural log absolute value. Secant of beta, so you come to the beta triangle, secant is ratio of hypotenuse over adjacent. So that would be 5 over 3 plus tangent of beta is 4 over 3 minus natural log absolute value. Secant of alpha, that's hypotenuse over adjacent. So that's rad 10 over 3 plus tangent of alpha, which is 1 over 3. Good? Okay, so now we just have to clean up our answer and use our log properties. So this is natural log, 5 thirds plus 4 thirds is 9 thirds, that's just 3, which is already positive. I don't have to write absolute value anymore. Minus natural log, this is rad 10 plus 1 over 3. And we can simplify further, right? We can use our properties of logarithms. This is natural log of 3 divided by rad 10 plus 1 over 3. And then if I divide by the denominator, then I'll have natural log of 9 over rad 10 plus 1. Now, you could stop there. You could. But you know, I just thought to myself, if we rationalize that denominator, if I multiply by rad 10 minus one, will I be happier? Will things look better? Will we be proud of ourselves? So nine times rad 10 minus one over, now these are conjugate pairs, so I'm just gonna be left with 10 minus one in the denominator. I know, right? Wasn't this just fabulous? That's nine, which cancels with that nine. So how could we have not done it? Now I just have natural log rad 10 minus one. That's just a stunning final answer, stunning. So anyways, that concludes your integral of the day. I hope you enjoyed it. Let me know if you solved it differently. You could skip the U sub in the beginning and just go straight for a trig sub. It felt a little aggressive if for like a newer Calc 2 student who's just learning trig sub, so I didn't wanna show it that way, but. Um, some students often just, you know, want to do one technique and call it a day. But let me know if you did something entirely different. I'm very curious to hear. And as always, don't forget if you need to brush up on any of your integration techniques, I have full length video, video lectures on my YouTube channel. Go to the Calc 2 uh, video lectures playlist. And I've also got like Calc 1, Calc 3, Intro to Stats, you name it. 
Follow me on Instagram and TikTok, Math with Professor V. Thank you guys so much for your support. I'll be back sooner than later. Bye.